presented by Church Tech U. It's the Pro Presenter Show. On today's show, three ways to sometimes put text on a teaching TV, sometimes on the main projectors or LED walls, and sometimes both. Hi and welcome again to the Pro Presenter Show. This is the show where I teach you all about Pro Presenter. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. And before we get started, why don't you join the over 10,000 other people that have subscribed and clicked the bell icon for this channel. And some of them have even gone to the trouble of uh, liking and leaving comments. I know, crazy talk. So... If your church is one where you have a teaching TV, um, Andy Stanley is really well known for this. Um, I'm actually kind of using one right here because this isn't like a virtual display. It's actually a TV that's getting a signal from ProPresenter. I'm using it vertically, but you could absolutely use it horizontally. Maybe you want text to sometimes be on one or sometimes be on the other, or sometimes be on both, how do you do that? Well, the first thought that a lot of people have is, well, I'll just use the announcement layer. But the problem with that is you have to go back and forth between two presentations. It would be better if you could just hit the space bar, right arrow key, click on the mouse, etc. And what you want to be on one would always be on that one, and what you want to be on the other would always be on the other. So... I agree with Brad Zimmerman on this that while you can do it with props, props is such a flexible layer that it's really ideal if you could do it another way. So let's head over to my computer. I'll show you a couple of ways to do it without using props, and then I'll show you how to do it with props. So here we are in ProPresenter 7, of course, and if we go to... Um, Let's just go to a sermon here. And this is not a sermon that's ever been preached anywhere. It's just example text, right? So the first thing that you can do is if we go into edit looks, you could have two looks presets. So let me add a couple of them here. So let's say don't want it on the audience screen, so I'll just do like that and disable the slides layer on the audience screen. Don't want it on the um, teaching TV, which we're going to use the alpha output that I have here in mind as an example of that. And we'll do it that way. And if you want it on both, then you'll just switch back to the default. So. Uh, one thing that I need to do in my case, because I am using the announcement layer for this, is I'm going to disable the announcement layer on those two outputs. So if we uh, just to, well, first let me select something here. And now look when I switch to 4 shows on alpha but not audience and when I switch to look five it does the opposite okay and then when I switch back to the default look it shows it on both okay so that's one way to do it a little bit more complex, but um, it is a feature in Pro 7, and it's helpful to know that you can do this if you need to, is to, instead of changing between looks um, that have it enabled and disabled, change between themes that have it enabled and disabled. So if we go into the theme editor, I've already created a theme called invisible text and what I did was I just added a text box and then I clicked on visibility here and then I could have chosen all of the following conditions are true or any of the following conditions are true since I'm only adding one condition it makes no difference and then I can say if this text 
does not have text, if the text box does not have text, then and only then do you show it. If it does, if it has text, it will show it. If it doesn't have text, it won't show it. So this is another way to do it, is you could, going back into our edit looks, I could, I think I did this on one and two, no, I did it on two and three, yes. So basically I added that theme for my alpha, my stage TV, right there. Here you can see it, okay? I added it there, and for this other look, I added it on the other one. So in this way, it's the slides layer is still showing, but it's not showing the text. And you may want to use that if you've got uh, images or videos that are showing on the slides layer, but you do not want the text to show while you do want the images to show both places. That's a good reason to do that. So you could do that. And by the way, I know I've mentioned this in other tutorials, but you can add an action. I've already done this, so let's remove this audience look action. So right click, add an action audience look and then you can choose which one based on what you're doing um, and have it show starting with that one. So you don't have to add that on every single slide but if it's the case that this one it needs to be on one but not the other, this one it needs to be on both, and this one it needs to be on just the flipped of how it is then you would need to change it on this but however this one is because it's got the little audience look right here that's what that icon means it's like a disguise it's like it has a different look that's actually what the programmer was thinking I'm told so this one will carry on over to this one and this one until we get down to this one which is different so you don't have to add them on everyone as long as you do them in order. You know, if you went to this one, and I'll show you that here in a second. If you went to this one, and then you went back to this one, which doesn't have anything, or this one, which doesn't have anything, then this one would remain in play. So... Keep it in mind that you have to think through, is my church one where we always go through all of them? Absolutely train people what to expect, but you may not have to put them on everyone. If, on the other hand, you're, uh, whoever's speaking is more circular in their thinking. There was a youth minister in my church that used to tell me that. Hey, Paul, I'm really circular, so I could pick any one of these uh, slides at any time. If you're in that situation, you might need to add it a little bit more often. But all that to say, uh, those are the first two ways to do it. The third way to do it is with props. Now, why you might want to do this is, as of right now, there's only one kind of transition between looks, and that is a cut. If, on the other hand, you want um, one of them to have, let's say, a dissolve or some other transition, maybe you want to do it with the props layer. So down here, I have created a prop already called Teaching TV. Let's right-click on it, and we're going to edit it, and I'll show you what it is. Again, just a text box. This time, it's got linked text. And the link text that it is, is the current slide text. So I just clicked this checkbox right there, link text, selected current slide, and selected the text. And now, every time this prop is in play, it will put up the text 
that is uh, showing on the main slide. So you could, for example, put this on when you want to show um, when you want to show it. And I've done that right here. So if we do that, you can see this little bitty text right here that came in separately. Um, and if I go to this output, this is the one where it came in. On look to what I should have done was disabled the prop so that um, for the main program output so that it wasn't in both places. But in this case, if you want to show it in one, just pick the appropriate thing. And if you want to show it in the other, pick the appropriate thing. You can clear out the props layer with a clear prop action right here. And uh, you'll be good to go. So that's a different way to do it. Each of them has their pluses and minuses, so you should decide, given your situation, which is the best. Um, I always default to trying to do it without the props layer, just so that if I need the props layer for something else, I can use it for that something else. But that's just uh, my perspective, one shared by the guy that does the official tutorials for ProPresenter. So, we're in whole agreement uh, there. So that's how you, three different ways that you could sometimes show text on one display, sometimes on another, and sometimes on both in ProPresenter 7. If you like this content, you'd probably like my ProPresenter 7 Quick Start course. So head on over to tdm.fyi slash pro, the number 7, and quick. Give me your name and email address, and I'll make a login for you for free so that you can take that class whenever you'd like. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford from TrinityDigitalMedia.com and ChurchTechU.com reminding you to go out and change eternity.